And at first we are going to take a look at SpaceX's newest spaceship model. Um, it's called these nets, okay? And this right here is the rocket and these are the blueprints, okay? Don't tell anyone, only I and Elon um, know about the newest SpaceX model. A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video if you haven't done so already. Don't forget to check out my newly founded shop stemrich.eu. A lot of handcrafted products going on over there like these tensegrity tables, headphone stands, DIY kits, etc. Check it out, stemrich.eu, link in the description, appreciate ya. So a few days ago, a week, I can't rem honestly, I seriously can't remember when I uploaded the video about mass varying in the physical system. So. Link in the description, I introduced that we can have mass, which is going to um, decrease over time. For example, in the pendulum, okay, leaking pendulum, I called it, it's losing mass over time, leaking water out, and so on. And there I was mentioning the so-called rocket equation. It's a fundamental <laughs> theorem equation in physics, which is going to guide how the, um, how the velocity of a rocket is going to change over time from start to finish, for example, or in between. It's a fundamental law, which is going to still be used up until this day and it has been derived ages ago and we are going to derive it today too using my method that I basically derived it with in the third semester at university after learning a bit about differential equations etc in theoretical physics and I hope you're going to enjoy the video. The story behind it is actually kind of curious behind the rocket equation because the person who derived it, Tsiolkovsky, derived it at the end of the 19th century and you know SpaceX, NASA and shit weren't a thing back then so uh, rockets flying to space also weren't a thing but he accurately predicted with one or two assumptions and a few fundamental laws how rockets are going to fly to the sky. It's still used up until this day and that's pretty astonishing if you ask me. And at first we are going to take a look at SpaceX's newest spaceship model. Um, it's called these nets, okay? And this right here is the rocket and these are the blueprints, okay? Don't tell anyone, only I and Elon um, know about the newest SpaceX model and it's obviously going to extrude some kind of fuel, okay? So yeah, this right here is the fuel that is going to be extruded. And now we are going to take a look at the movement of this thing a tiny little bit. Take a look at how it behaves, basically. I mean, obviously, the rocket is going to fly in this direction and the direction of the movement of the fuel which is being extruded is going to go in this direction. Now, as mentioned before, we are going to deal with a system where our mass is going to change over time. Namely, our rocket is going to lose its fuel and this means that the whole mass of the rocket is going to decrease over time too. We are going to say that it's going to be guided by a function m with respect to t and our only assumption that we are going to take for this whole thing, so you don't even need a rocket to derive the rocket equation, just like Tsiolkovsky, is that our fuel is going to be extruded at the same rate all the time. Let's say one liter of fuel per minute, for example. Stable rate all the time, it's going to decrease. We are going to start off with a certain amount of fuel and if it decreases at the same rate, it means it's going to be guided by a linear function of sorts. Meaning our m with respect to t is going to be equal to some a times t plus b. a obviously needs to be negative, it's a decreasing function and this also means that the derivative of our um, mass is going to be equal to a constant. Now, the fuel that is being extruded all the time out of the back, out of the engines right here, these nuts engines, <laughs> it's going to be the portion or the difference of our initial mass and what is left up here in our rocket basically. Meaning what we got is just some kind of delta m which is being extruded out of the back. And this delta m is going to be at a stable rate if we differentiate m with respect to time. Now, what about our extrude velocity? I mean, the fuel is going to come out with a certain velocity. This velocity is also going to be some kind of constant. We are going to call it dub, uh, VE for extrude velocity. Why is it constant? I mean, we are extruding the same amount of fuel all the time. We are not going to push on the brakes and we are not going to push on the gas. We are not going to increase the amount of fuel or decrease the amount of fuel. We are going to extrude out of the bag. Meaning at the same time, each and every time, 
the same amount of fuel is going to be burned, meaning the extrude velocity is also going to be equal. I mean, we're not going to increase anything, the same stuff is going to pop out of the bag all the time. Now, what about the velocity of our rocket overall? I mean, the velocity of our rocket, hmm, does it change? I mean, thing is, since we extrude the same amount of velocity all the time, um, doesn't that also mean that our rocket is going to fly with the same velocity all the time? No, actually not. See, those two quantities are going to be equal, um, constants, you could say. Now, if these are constants, but the mass is going to change over time, all the time, meaning our mass is going to decrease over time. This also means for this part to stay constant, we need our velocity that we get up here to increase. I mean, it does make sense. If we are losing weight or mass, our rocket is going to be easier to move, it's going to accelerate in, in some way. I mean, does make sense? A, a rocket, okay, <laughs> it's going to accelerate over time. Meaning, we are going to have a change in velocity up here. And this is how our rocket is going to move. These are the most important parts of our movement. And they are going to be important in a few minutes. Once again, there was just a little bit of analysis. Now we are going to use the other two things in classical mechanics that are well known. Two little axioms which are only slightly important, barely important. Namely, we are going to make use of Newton's third law, I think, at first. Namely, Imagine we have this piece of chalk and this piece of chalk is going to push down on the earth with a force of 3 newtons. Now Newton's uh, third law tells us that our earth is going to act with the same force onto our chalk, so 3 newtons, but in the opposite direction. It's going to accelerate towards our chalk with 3, three newtons and this chalk is going to accelerate downwards with 3 newtons. Meaning if we were to put this in mathematical terms, this just means that the force from the object 1 on 2 is equal to negative the force so the opposite force from object 2 to 1. And by Newton's second law we also know that each and every force is equal to mass times acceleration. Meaning we can equivalently rewrite this as the mass of the first object, for example the chalk, times the acceleration towards the earth from the chalk. Acceleration is the time derivative of the velocity, important in the second, hence I'm writing it like this. And this is equal to negative the mass of the second object, so our earth, times the acceleration from the earth towards our chalk. Now that's what we got right here. And that's an easy to solve differential equation. How can you solve this one? Well, by integrating both sides with respect to t. Let us do this real quick. At this moment, our masses are still not time dependent. Newton's laws wouldn't work with time dependent masses, so just saying. Meaning, these are still just constant, we can bring it to the front and integrating d dt of v1 with respect to t is just going to give us the v's overall, the velocities. Meaning, by integrating indefinitely, we are going to get m1 times v1 is equal to m2 times v2, indefinitely means plus some arbitrary constancy. And now, negative sign, don't forget that, we are going to add our m2 v2 on both sides, giving us the following just barely important expression, m1 times v1 plus m2 times v2 is equal to some constant c. Hey, m times v, this kind of rings a bell. Ain't that what the physicists and the jets and the virgins call momentum? Yes, this right here is the momentum of our first object, for example, our rocket. This right here is the first momentum in the system. This right here is the second momentum in the system. For example, the momentum of our extruded fuel. Both momenta added together are going to be constant if two physical structures added together are going to be constant. This is what you call the conservation law of this certain construction, namely, this right here is the conservation law for momentum. We had the same thing with the conservation of energy. We are going to add two energies together, kinetic and potential, and they are going to be equal to the whole energy of the system, a constant value at all times. And if we were to differentiate this with respect to time, for example, we are going to get zero. This is a conservative law in physics, and this also holds in general. Namely, if we were to add all of our momenta together, namely n many for example, then this is going to be a constant value. And this logic also holds for our rocket. So we can have 
n many momenta, let, let's say the momentum of our rocket and the momentum of each and every particle being extruded here and all of those added together are going to be some kind of constant. I mean dimension wise let's just call our whole momentum of the system to be just p and dimension wise this is going to be equal to just some n times v total mass and total velocity of the system being equal to some kind of constant. Our conservation of momentum is also going to hold on the system, okay? All the momentum is going to be preserved. But now we are going to put our initial assumption in, namely that our mass is going to change over time. Meaning this equation that we got here is going to be modified as m with respect to t times v with respect to t is equal to a constant c. And now what we are going to do is we are going to differentiate this with respect to time on both sides. Now what is going to happen if we differentiate this product with respect to time? I mean on the right hand side a constant differentiated is just going to be zero. Now on the left hand side we are going to have the differential of a product. Using the product rule we are going to arrive at zero being equal to m times v dot plus m dot times v. So this is the mass which is going to change over time. And now I'm just going to add um, this part on both sides for example. Oh uh, no, let's go with this part, really doesn't matter. I'm not going to add it, I'm going to subtract it. Giving us m times v dot is equal to negative m dot times v. And this right here is a differential equation that we need to solve now with some conditions plugged in for our little rocket that we got down here. And we actually laid the groundwork for our differential equation with this sketch right here. Now take a look at the similarities. We got m times v dot. v dot is nothing other than the difference in our velocities over the difference in time and the difference is going to go to zero, difference quotient. Meaning this is just a derivative of the velocity with respect to time. Now what happens if we were to sneakily divide our little multiplications that we got right here, I wrote it like this because this is meant to be uh, multiplications, meaning our uh, momenta in the system. Both we are going to divide by delta t. And what is going to happen if we let our differences go to zero? Well, this is just going to end up with the differentials. In infinitesimal terms speaking, we are just going to end up with, when taking the limit as the difference goes to zero, with our differential equation right here. The only difference with our rocket is the fact that our extrusion velocity is going to be a constant, VE. Other than that, everything stays just the same as up here in our differential equation. And this right here is the differential equation which is going to guide our rocket. By this differential equation, each and every velocity of a rocket is going to work with a constant extrusion rate. Now let us solve this bad boy, shall we? So we are just going to separate variables. We are going to divide both sides by m under the condition that it's not equal to zero in the initial positions and in between, never. And then we are going to divide both sides by um, the extrusion velocity, also under the assumption that it's not equal to zero, giving us that one over ve times v dot is equal to m dot divided by m. And now we are simply going to integrate both sides with respect to t to solve this differential equation. Ve is a constant value, meaning this really doesn't matter. We can leave it on the outside, integrating this with respect to t. And also we would like to plug in some initial conditions. What we are looking for is how our velocity of the rocket is going to behave from start to finish. Namely, the initial velocity is going to be the starting point of integration up until the final velocity. Same thing with our amount of fuel or the mass overall that our rocket has. Namely, we are going to start off with an initial mass. This is the mass of the rocket plus the mass of the fuel in there up until the final mass of the rocket. This is basically just the empty rocket without any fuel in it. And now we can start integrating. If you don't know how to integrate stuff like this, I invite you to introduce a little substitution, namely just <laughs> for funny purposes we are going to say let for example u be equal to v. Now if we implicitly differentiate with respect to t we are going to get that du is nothing other than, okay, differentiating v with respect to t is going to give us v dot times vt. Hey, this is what we got right here. Meaning what we have here is nothing other than du. Integrating du is just going to give us u where u is equal to v. The meaning overall on the left hand side we are going to get a 1 over ve times v from vr to vf. 
is equal to. And now the same arguments here, introducing a substitution, let u be equal to m, then we're going to <coughs> sorry, implicitly differentiate both sides with respect to t, then we are going to get that du is nothing other than m dot times dt, meaning this right here, our integrand is just going to be du divided by u, where our u is equal to m. And this right here is nothing other than a natural logarithm of our um, of our mass because u is nothing other than our m. Also I forgot a negative sign here, I'm terribly sorry, but there was probably an, an annotation during the video. Meaning we are going to get negative the natural log of our mass m. Also up until our bounds from mr to mf. <laughs> good old mf. And now we are just going to plug up and lower bounds in. I mean here on this side it's going to be easy. We are going to get vf minus vi divided by ve. Also on this side we are going to get negative the natural log <coughs> of mf and a negative and negative is going to become positive so plus the natural log of mr. By the logarithm rules, <coughs> oh, sorry, by the logarithm rules, we also have that we can take the quotient of arguments here. So this is just a natural log of mr divided by mf. And now we can just multiply both sides by ve. And by considering this to be just our delta v, okay, just the difference in velocities over time, we are going to get a final rocket equation of delta v being equal to the extrusion velocity times the logarithm of the quotient of our initial mass divided by the final mass. And this right here is our rocket equation which is going to be the guiding force behind rocket flight. And this basically concludes today's video and I hope you did like what you saw today. And if you would like to see another derivation of this whole thing, maybe one that is more intuitive with underlying pictures, visuals, etc. Then I invite you to try out today's sponsor Preant, who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. Preant seriously does do a fantastic job at teaching people using visuals. It's what their courses are all about. Teaching mathematics, physics, computer sciences, chemistry using visualizations and illustrations and they do it so perfectly. By taking a look at, for example, their rocket equation course, you are also going to notice how their course system is going to work out. You are going to start off with easy chapters on the conservation of momentum, for example, Newton's laws, conservation of momentum, and suddenly you are there sitting on a chair and then you are going to extrude fuel out of your fire extinguisher. And this is going to tell you something about the momentum in a system. And then suddenly you're going to notice, hey, you are like a rocket. I mean, you're ex extruding fuel and then you are moving. And then they are leading over to these rockets. And then you are suddenly done deriving the rocket equation completely intuitively with a few pictures attached to it. And if you are interested in even more of that good stuff, then I invite you to try out my link down there in the description, preant.org slash flamblemaths. With it you are going to get free access to a big portion of preant already, but the first 200 people to actually make use of the link get 20% of an annual premium subscription, which is a really great deal considering that they are adding new content each and every month and they are brushing up and polishing all their old courses such that they are um, just even better overall than they already were which is pretty hard to do because they are already pretty much perfect and very, very educational. So try it out and support the channel this way. I thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out stemmerch.eu. You can find the wall tapestries and the other merch over on stemmerch.com or my personal Teespring shop. Also don't forget to support the channel on Patreon or become a member of the channel. Up until next video, I wish you guys a flammable day. Ciao and please stay safe. See ya. <laughs>